What is going on guys? Welcome to episode 3 of my West Brom FIFA 17 career mode series. First game here away from home against Newcastle United in the EFL Cup. This is going to be a big match for us. Championship team, but Newcastle United, still good players, obviously got promoted in real life back in the Premier League for next season. Uh, but there you would see we're just changing up the kits a little bit. As you can see, the home and home uh, look pretty close. There's a bit of white in there, and then the way was black for us. So, yeah, we'll eventually sort that out, even though we're yeah, using the home kit and they're using... Um, a different way we're using the away kit sorry and yeah alternate that was good enough they're not using their official home kit but yeah past that now that should be all right anyway we just need to make some changes though uh even though i think it'll be a close game newcastle united not going to be an easy team to beat we need to make changes Premier League really is the most important uh, competition this season for us. We've got to finish as high as we can, hopefully get some decent money for the following season and really continue to make signings uh, like we have been improving the team. Uh, that's what we've got to do with West Brom. Like if we s sign the same kind of players, uh, we're really not going to be improving the team. It's going to be staying the same. Like I told you about Robson Canu. I don't see a future for him at the club, but he recently signed, so I can't... Um, sell him until next season or maybe January though yeah that's why I'm trying to bring in better players to improve the team that is the point here because like I said uh, we'll be staying the same if we didn't but Newcastle United uh, we are ready to get into this game now and also guys these are not live commentaries but you probably can tell anyway um, how I produce them we're just going to see what's happening here it's Half time almost, and they could score, and they do score. That is very, very disappointing to concede there in the EFL Cup just before half time. Like I said, uh, no real key highlights. Uh, we definitely, yeah, we couldn't score. We definitely couldn't score in the first half, as you can see by that. But uh, yeah, back on that point, I'm not doing live commentaries. They could be more exciting. Um, I've done live commentaries before, but I'm kind of bringing back an old style of career mode videos. What I really did at the start of my career on YouTube uh, with career mode videos and what got me into it more than anything. It's more the storytelling opposed to being about the reactions because that's live. But uh, in post commentaries, I can think more about the commentary and make it a better quality video as a whole opposed to just screaming and that being the best uh, part of videos like reactions to goals, which I want to be more than that. But getting into the first half now, we did really well, got the ball through. Uh, we won the free kick, but there is one bad thing about our team currently we don't really have a good free kick taker look at this look at the curves and the free kick accuracy that's terrible because the free kicks are not going to be accurate and if it is accurate it's going to be too weak uh, and you can see that Robson Canu picking up the injury so gave it to McLean and yeah I just I don't even feel I put that much power on it <laughs> and yeah, just completely into the crowd. So Robson Canu's picked up an injury and we are going to have to substitute him. And yeah, look who we have. We have a type like Chadley who can bring on. Normally he'll start on the left side. Uh, maybe he could be effective as an attacking midfielder. And of course, that's another thing as well. This is so early in the career mode. And uh, normally it takes me, well, maybe a couple months uh, to get used to my players and new signings I'll bring in as well. And then, yeah, you'll always see me improving uh, with results I don't generally do worse consistently normally get better <laughs> that's what you hope to do that's what should happen but here's Rondon he strikes and I was pretty disappointed with that I think he is a good striker the accuracy on that again I didn't think I aimed that that terrible but obviously the pressure he was under uh, turned hit on his weaker left as well so yeah a couple things are leading to that but unfortunately we were not able to score this late in the game as well pretty frustrating and there that first deflection and then there's another deflection twice in a row that was absolutely crazy twice in a row the deflection went straight to their player and obviously uh, giving them every chance to finish off the game there so you can see the shot directly in the path of their player uh, came with the post and same situation again with that deflection so I was pretty frustrated after that just kicked it back down there and I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe it just wasn't our day. It just wasn't our day today here. Um, down 2-0, Newcastle United. Like I talked about, I got some good team, um, a good team. Uh, they've got good players in the team. 
I should say, but you've got Oyoze, Perez, uh, Matt Ritchie. Like, majority of the starting 11 is a Premier League team. Like, they're Premier League players, 100%. They're very, very good. And I don't think I underrated them. I just, or I wasn't able to play well enough um, in the game. That's the simple answer to the question. And that I did have to rotate the players. So trying to go in for those slight tackles uh, because I couldn't really win the ball back. Pretty frustrated at the end of the game. So we quickly get out of that and move on from it. As I said, only the EFL Cup. I suppose now one less competition to play and we can focus focus on Premier League games. That's it. Obviously, West Brom not in Europe and move on to something so positive, completely uh, different. We had a bad result and now we're confirming finally the signing of Kylian Mbappe and I am pumped. I'm excited to use him. He's going to be absolutely amazing for this career mode in my point of view and you guys, obviously, um, yeah, majority of you guys uh, like the signing of him. Obviously, that few little crowd uh, that I really get on YouTube backs about unrealistic signings but uh, yeah you can't doubt the signing of Kylian Mbappe he is only going to be good for us and maybe in the future we'll sell him we'll get amazing offer and make profit you cannot really predict what is going to happen in the future uh, but he is going to be a massive boost to the morale in the club 100% and Dennis Zakaria this guy I'll show you his attributes when we sign him but he hasn't got the best finishing he's more so a really strong central midfielder I think he'd be in the mold of Yaya Toure at least the defensive side of thing physically um, Yaya Toure obviously can score some goals but that's the thing his attributes are low like for shooting finishing uh, Zakaria but you know when attributes are low, they can be trained up really, really quickly. That is the good thing. Because you know those higher attributes, they take longer. The lower ones, yeah, you can work on that. So we could at least develop into a decent player. Uh, get up to average maybe in the 70s. So yeah, he will be a very good player. That will boost his ratings if his lower attributes. Well, yeah, boost his rating if his lower attributes get improved. So, And that's another reason why we sign him. Cheap wages. Because he was only on, what, 7.8k? So yeah, really cheap. And we have got him on 10K if he does accept that contract, of course. Uh, Jack Rose, offer from Shrewsby. You can see that his value is 200K. Uh, we do actually have him transfer listed uh, because he's 21. He's maybe like an 18-year-old, 18, 19-year-old, 18, 19 I should say. Uh, if they were that same overall you might give them more of a chance but if they're 21 you expect them to be yeah close to the first team so there we go we finalized that signing Zachariah so bring in um, some quality youngsters uh, most definitely I think he might be a bit more unheard of of course he's probably still known not saying he's unknown completely uh, but compared to other uh, players with potential in career mode I think his potential is still around 86 so pretty good as a, a lesser like I would have to still say especially from the team he's coming from i think that um obviously there's people like i said there, there would be people who know of him but i think there'll be a certain crowd uh, that don't know about this lad so hopefully uh, yeah i can uh, do a good job with him and develop him and maybe some of you guys will see him as a good player and pick him up in your own career modes that's what i like to do with my videos as well the biggest thing is that's why i just said before in terms of live commentaries or not uh, i like to base my videos around tips and yeah how i play my career modes and maybe you'll get something from it um i did my manchester united career mode live commentaries obviously a lot of you guys like that uh, Again, not a very good start here. Middlesbrough score the first goal. Uh, but yeah, like I said, back on that point, I really like to give tips in the videos and hopefully you enjoy my gameplay as well. But it would help if my goalkeepers can at least attempt to save it. That would be nice. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go a bit more attacking now and we're going to see how that is going to affect the game. We're building up on an attack here. Morris... Morrison, uh, he gets it to Fletcher, Darren Fletcher. He's not like a player. He's going to do something in that position. So I think he did pretty well there to actually win the corner. We play it short. Morrison again gets on the ball. He's a guy, I'm not sure about his future at the club as well. I think he's around that 30 years of age. So if we get an offer in for him, I don't think we will this window. Maybe in January or something, maybe next season. But yeah, these guys around that kind of age, they're not going to be part of our success. And the success looks really, really far away right now. Uh, the first games of the season was good. We won the first two games, but now it's not looking as promising. Like, this is Middlesbrough. We should be considering this as a game we have a chance to win. 
Like, obviously, there's going to be certain games in the season against bigger teams that's going to be really hard. But right now, uh, Middlesbrough is a struggle for us. Though, we have made some changes. Mbappe is on. Your first look at him. And he did really well there, apart from score. That would have been... He did the best thing, apart from scoring there. Some very good signs. But uh, only, like, under 10 minutes left. We get it to Rondon. Rondon gives us some hope and scores a goal. And again, the previous game, he had a couple chances. But he finally gets the breakthrough here as well take a look at this low powerful strike it was a really effective especially when you got a striker who's got a lot of shot power so he finally breaks his duck for the season and hopefully it just starts a run of scoring and I did actually change uh, to two strikers uh, when maybe I should do that do you think that is a good suggestion playing with Rondon and Mbappe like, when they're both on the pitch at the same time, I personally think they'll be really dangerous because they're two of our best players. That's the thing. I would be hesitant unless uh, Rondon is really tired to bring on Mbappe. Should I start them both together? Let me know in the comments. As I mentioned, still experimenting at this uh, stage in the career mode. And again, all these younger guys we're going to train out. But yeah, add Mbappe uh, to the training session. I was thinking about beat your man. But then what I was just talking about or in the game at that point, I was thinking, yeah, we want to improve his finishing. Even though it's decent. The attributes are decent. So they're not going to improve uh, so fast. But mix that training with regular game time. Like, to me, he's going to play every single game, whether it be starting or coming off the bench. You get that game time into him. Because, like I said, coming in, he's really one of our uh, better players. And, arguably, Rondon is our best player, so he's in the same position. And also, Rose, we are looking to sell him on for the reasons, as I mentioned. Because of his age as a younger player, he still probably yeah, he doesn't have that potential in him as well. Uh, Jack Rose, we're going to accept, I think, 200k at his value. We'll be happy with that. And then, Leko, we're actually going to reject him. Because you'll see he's in and around the first team. So we can't really afford to let him go on a loan. Definitely part of the future. So that's a deal. Uh, we sell Rose, get a little bit of money. So we're going to take a look at the board expectations. I'm right on uh, what the board wants us to have by the end of the season. But I do want to go for a loan signing. Axel to Anze Bay from Manchester United. I don't have time to scout him, but I know the kind of player he is. And he's a physically good center back. He's going to help the rotations at the back uh, for this season, especially after the last couple games especially I thought to myself yeah need to change things defensively and if I can just get a loan guy and he'll go back end of the season that recovers uh, we'll get the wages back so it doesn't affect yeah our final uh, transfer budget for the season um, like you know by the expectations we need 17 million from the budget uh, both budgets together so we should have that we finalize the deal at the end or well, close to the end three hours left on the deadline day uh, we're going to get an offer. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, negotiate it at least, but it's going to be pointless. Even if I accepted it there, but I wouldn't want to because I feel I can get more for Dawson. But he's close to a 60 overall player. I'm going to be trying to sell him. I got him on the transfer list. That's why I got to offer in for him. But yeah, guys, uh, those kind of players we're going to uh, try and sell on. Like if, they're, if they're getting older and they're not good enough for the first team compared to the other players we bring in. And obviously, yeah, young players we sign, but also uh, the young lads we scout. Sam Murphy, take a look at this. He's six foot seven. That's a goalkeeper size. And he's going to be an outfield player. I think he will be a defender. You'll see that. So, yeah, even though he's only a defender, that's going to be huge. He can definitely win those headers. So, yeah, he's going to be a beast for us. Hopefully, we'll train him up. And Taylor Cox will actually have a good update to his potential and we're going to sign him up to the first team especially that he's 18 so I thought yeah he'll want to uh, come in soon enough and yeah Jerome Richard will just wait till he's 16 and sign him up as you can see yeah middle potential 82 he's going to be a good player but yeah if you guys enjoyed this episode and want to uh, see some more maybe leave some formation suggestions let me know uh, drop a like and I shall see you guys in the very next episode